Hey, I didn't say this. He wrote this. How many of you ladies, at, 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 at sometimes you wanted to dance with your husband, but you was afraid the church might say something? Be honest. Lift your hand up. Come on. And my Lord, people worry about you getting in lust. My Lord, if you can't hug somebody or dance them without lust in your mind, something wrong with you. And they used to say that a sleeveless dress was a sin. How can a sleeveless dress be a sin? If an armpit turns you on, you're demon possessed. An armpit. It's an armpit. What's wrong with a sleeveless dress? Well, when it's hot, it's hot. It was so hot today in New Orleans. We got Africa hot in New Orleans. 95, 100 degrees, 100 percent humidity. It was so hot. I saw a dog chasing a cat, and both of them were walking. Ain't no use. <laughs> it is hot. He heard music and dancing. Come on, can nobody do me like Jesus? Yeah. I better get off that. The Pentecostals are mad. This is the churchy boy now. Verse 26. He called one of the servants and asked him what these things meant. He said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Whoa, wait a minute, churchy boy. Churchy brother. You ought to be glad if somebody repents and comes back to church. Whoa, whoa, but the church... He mad, he angry, treachery boy. And he would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. Notice the father loved both them boys. The father went out and got that fool. I'd have let him stay out there myself. But he went looking for the younger, he went looking for the elder. That's the father, that's that mercy, grace, and redemption. No matter what, my God, he loves you. And he wouldn't go in the church before. He's angry. Why would the church get mad if somebody uh, got, came back to Jesus Christ? When I got born again, I was, last time I was here a couple of years ago, whatever, I told you I was a rocker. I had long hair. Do you know they wouldn't accept? I didn't have time to cut the hair. I went to a church service and they wouldn't pray with me. Oh, you ain't saved. Your hair's cut. I said, you head, you bald headed. So what's the difference? <laughs> You're just mad at me because I got hair. <laughs> Craziness. Hmm. <laughs> Now watch how the churchy boy sounds. And he answered, said to his father, Lo, you know the churchy people get real low. <laughs> Lord, lo, these many years do I serve thee. They're always reminding God what they do. Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress God any time thy commandment. Yet you never gave me a calf that I make merry with my friends. Don't that sound churchy? When I come, everybody else get here, but bless God, I don't get here. I've been serving you a long time, Jesus. Watch the next verse. But as soon as this thy son, he doesn't call him his brother. He could have said, it's only my brother. And he said, as long as you, this thy son, your son, which hath divided thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fat of the cow. Oh, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. How does the churchy brother know that his younger brother is chasing whores? Well, well, wait, wait. Unless he got whores on his mind himself. How many preachers you know got whores on their mind? Don't shout me down. Oh, wait, I'm in New York. Ho. Them hoes. Ho. Wait a minute. The only evidence that we have that his younger brother was chasing whores comes from his elder brother who hates him. So how are we going to believe him? I love it. I went, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's the only evidence. Unless he's got whores and harlots and prostitutes, the churchy boy on his mind. Think about that for a minute. He's already accusing his brother who's repented, but you see, he ain't got the guts to leave. The churchy boy. But evidently, he's got whores on his mind. Mm, 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 mm. Verse 31. Now, now, this father is such a wonderful person. He said to them, son, he still called him son. I'd have said, you ignorant fool. 
you stupid boy. But he said, son, watch this. Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. You want a party? You can have a party every night. You want a cab? Okay, you want to make a ribeye steak out of him. I don't care. Everything I got's yours, or quit trying to become what you already are. You want something that's already been given, and you're mad because you hadn't got it. Well, it ain't God's fault. You got to pick it up. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Listen to me. This is the church of all. And the father says, son, not to have it with me. All I got's yours. You could have had anything you want. Watch this. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. The title of this message is, is dawn never comes twice to awaken you. Now, I want, to note, I want you to notice something here. I'm going to be flip-flopping back and forth between the younger son and the churchy boy, the elder brother. Now, notice this. Both those boys were good sons. The father said that, called them both sons, but they were not good brothers. See, the problem with the church world, we got a lot of great sons and daughters, but we don't have a lot of good brothers and sisters. Oh, we can't go worship with y'all. Y'all believe that prosperity stuff. Well, it beats being broke. I don't believe in that healing stuff. We'll get sick. One man said, I don't believe in healing. I said, you ain't got sick enough yet. You ain't never had a doctor stick his finger in your face and say, you better get your life together because you got two months to live. You got cancer all over your body. Then somebody like me becomes very popular to you. See, they were both of them were good sons. The father called them good sons, but they were not good brothers. Yeah, where are all the Baptists tonight? Where are the Episcopalian, the Presbyterian, the Church of God, the Church of Christ? Where are the Church of God of prophecy in Christ? Wait, excuse me, where are they? They're supposed to, you know, I'll tell, where, where, where are all these? Symbols of God, where are they at? What's happening? How come, how come we just got Creflo's people? Don't shout me down. Listen to me. See, we're good sons and daughters, but we're not good brothers and sisters. Because if you don't believe like I believe, I just can't worship with you. Excuse me. God said come together in the unity of the faith. He didn't say the unity of doctrine. See, the problem is we're not good brothers and sisters. We're good sons and daughters, but not good brothers and sisters. Let me give you a prime example. I want to I, I, I I kind of flip-flop back and forth here. Now watch this here. Not long ago, I very seldom get a day off. You know, I did six cities or seven cities, six cities last week. I mean, I was just going. And tonight, I'm in New York. Tomorrow morning, I'm in Atlanta. Tomorrow night, I'm in New Orleans. Uh, Monday, I'm in Beckley, West Virginia. I'm just going all the time. Watch this. So we had a day off. Now, I live in a city, not New Orleans, New Orleans. Naturally, New Orleans. Okay? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week city. It's kicking constantly. Well, we had a day off, and I said, hey, Kathy, let's go to our favorite restaurant. We're going to go down to the French Quarter. We'll eat at Mr. B's. You ever go to New Orleans, you eat at Mr. B's. Get, get the barbecue shrimp. You'll shoot at your veins. That's how good it is. Yeah, that's the old days, but anyway, glory to God. All right. Listen to me, man. So I said, hey, Kathy, I'm going to take you down there. I said, we'll go down there. We'll grab a bite to eat. Then we'll walk around the quarter, you know, just kind of, because it's a very cultural city in New Orleans. She said, okay. So we got in the car, man. I'm driving down the road, and I passed by the United Methodist Church. And when I passed by, there was a bunch of wonderful old cars out there. I'm talking about real cars, man. I'm talking muscle cars. I'm talking 442s, GTOs, Super B 440, Lord Jesus. A road runner. I mean, these cars, they just, they just kind of shake. I mean, they speak in tongues. I ain't talking about cars with a, that sound like me. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about real cars. My generation. I looked at them cars. I was back to 17 and 18 years old. I thought, my God. God, they look at those cars. Oh, gee. I'm talking beautiful cars. Little GT. Oh, you really looking fine. You know, oh, oh gee. Four speed and a 380, Lord Jesus, this powerful car. I said, Kathy, let's stop and look at these cars. She said, okay, I got in there, and I'm talking about cars, man. I'm walking around these beautiful, and they were immaculate, like they were in the 60s and the 70s, you know, the early 70s and late 60s. I'm, and so I sat in one, I said, can I start it, man? She said, go ahead and start. It was a, it was a 440 Super B. And you're just trembling like that. I thought, Lord Jesus. She said, Kathy, I said, you don't remember that? I said, oh, no, get in the back seat. You remember? Oh, am I shaking you up? Oh, Lord Jesus. Don't, don't look at me. We were sinners. She's heard me say this before. We were sinners. And what are you laughing at? You was in the back seat too. How many of you fogged up the windows? 
You ain't gonna tell your kids, but you fog them windows up.